Hello and welcome to day 18 of my Advent of Code series for 2020. So if you've missed any of the previous episodes, you want to check those out, check out the playlist linked right up there, and we can just go ahead and jump in with 18 operation order. So what's happening here is we are helping the person sitting next to us on the I forget if we're on a train or a plane at this point with their math homework, uh, but their math homework works a little bit differently than we might expect. So instead of having operator precedence like we would expect where multiplication and division come before addition and subtraction and all of that, uh, they just read completely left to right. The only operators are addition and multiplication, and also they are able to override that order with parentheses. Um, so we just need to go ahead and help them out with operating uh, like that. And then we need to return the sum of all of the answers to all of the questions in their homework. So I use a very different method here, but I recommend you go ahead and give this a try for yourself. And then we can jump into my code right now. So we're still reading in our input as normal, but then we have this weird class right here called num1. So num1 you'll see uh, is based on the integer class and it just overrides two of its functions. So it overrides addition by wrapping its normal addition definition inside of a num1. Uh, and it overrides subtraction with uh, num1 multi with integer multiplication. Um, so the reason I'm doing this is because if you think about it, we just need to get rid of operator precedence, and then we will have a string that we can evaluate completely normally like it was just math. Um, so addition and subtraction have the same precedence, and since we're lucky enough to only have two operators here, uh, that is going to go ahead and just give us what we need if we just replace subtraction with multiplication. Uh, so since we go ahead and do that and replace subtraction with multiplication, then what goes ahead and happens here is if we can replace all of the tokens that represent multiplication, so all of the stars in our input string with subtraction signs, uh, then if we go ahead and just evaluate that mathematical expression directly, we're going to get our answer. Um, so that's exactly what I do right here. I replace all of these stars with dashes, uh, so all the multiplication signs with subtraction signs, and then I go ahead and use this regular expression here to encapsulate every number that we find. Uh, so that's going to be each actual number token in the input, like four right here. Uh, I encapsulate that in a call to the num1 constructor, which is going to turn all of those into num1s, when we eventually pass this entire string that gets built into eval. So quick disclaimer, never, ever, ever use eval in your code. It is horrible, it is completely unsafe, and if you pass any sort of user input or anything that is not very, very closely looked at by you and highly scrutinized by your code somehow, it can and probably will end up breaking your computer. Um, so here, since we know exactly what our input is going to look like, and we assume that there's nothing malicious in here, it's fine to use eval, but just in general, you really want to avoid it. It is a horrible function, uh, and it has no place in any sort of production code. Um, but here, it's just a toy, so whatever, it's fine. So that is pretty much going to replace all of our stars with dashes, uh, turn all of our things into num ones so that dashes mean multiply, but they still have the same precedence as addition, and then just evaluate that string in Python. And that is going to give us our solution. We just need to find the sum of the list of all of that being applied, and that is it. So now we can go ahead and jump into part two. So in part two, instead of it being that there is no precedence, the precedence is actually just flipped. So addition comes before multiplication. Um, so I'm sure you can already think of how I probably did that using a similar pattern to my solution last time. Uh, but you can go ahead and give this a try for yourself and then we will jump into my code. So what I went ahead and did here is I just said, okay, well, what are two things where the one of them has precedence that's higher than the other? Uh, it's subtraction multiplication. I didn't use addition here because then we would have to add another replacement statement to here. Um, so what I just did is I said, okay, the definition of subtraction is now multiplication and the definition of multiplication is now addition. So now what we can go ahead and do is just replace all of our instances of multiplication with subtraction. And then we can replace all of our instances of addition with multiplication symbols. Um, and then if we turn all those into num2s, those symbols will mean the same thing that they did in the original string, except for they will be represented by a different symbol uh, so that the precedence when we call eval is changed. Um, so that is just going to go ahead and work like that. So since subtraction comes before multiplication, this is going to make us do the actual, or since uh, multiplication comes before subtraction, this is going to make us do our actual additions before our multiplications. Uh, and then we can just do the same exact thing we did in part one, and that is it. So I hope you enjoyed this slightly different approach 
uh, to a problem than I normally have. I wanted to show off something a little bit cooler and how you can just sort of abuse how your language works instead of always just doing the correct thing and implementing the solution as expected. Um, so this one I had a lot of fun with, as you can see, and I hope you enjoyed it too. Uh, be sure to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it and get subscribed to me so you don't miss any of my future videos. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.